Uh, a very warm welcome, and uh, we, we know that this is going to be a mass section with a lot of participants, but we don't expect so many of them here today, okay? Thank you very much for joining us today one more time. Uh, my name is Fred. Wait, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Fred. I am the Associate Dean of the school responsible for undergraduate studies. Uh, I'm also the director of the Integrated BBA program. So that's why I'm here today, trying to introduce you this program, right? So uh, today's uh, seminar is going to be divided into three main parts. The first part is my introduction, okay? So uh, hopefully I will be able to give you a brief idea about what IBBA program is, okay? Uh, in the second part, of course, uh, we have invited three distinguished alumni okay, uh, to share with us I mean, their experience when they are studying here in business school, when they are you know, pursuing their career. So uh, I guess that this is something very valuable to you. And the final part of the seminar will be a little bit more on admission process, interviews, as well as scholarships. Okay. So here we go. So uh, I'm not sure whether you know it or not. Um, our CHK Business School is actually the first business school in Asia offering a full range of business programs. So uh, including, as you can see here, the BBA. Okay, so you can see it here. BBA, MBA, and uh, EMBA, executive MBA programs. So uh, our school has started okay, our core and quote business since 1963. So of course, I mean, the question that you may have here is that, well, I mean, how is it related to me? Okay, so CHK Business School is the quote unquote oldest business school. And uh, how is it related to me potentially as an IBBA student? Is this actually related? Okay, and I'm going to share with you a little bit more on this. So um, if I am to describe the IBBA program, so uh, I always stress on these following things. So uh, as you can see, uh, what I put down here is uh, comprehensive business education, right? This is the first thing. Second is the high flexibility that we are offering to our uh, prospective students. Um, the diversified co-curricular activities. Sorry for the feedback, right? And finally, um, different interesting options for you especially the dual degree program, which is a collaboration with the IE Business School in Spain, all right? So uh, I'm going to walk you through that's these I mean, important things about the IBBA program. The first one, okay, what, we, what does it mean by comprehensive business education? Have you ever wondered, I mean, sometimes when we call it IBBA, what does this I stand for? It stands for integrated. Right? Integrated. So what does it mean by integrated program? It means that students in this program are going to receive training in all business areas. All business areas. So that's just to say, as you can see here, what I put down includes, say, finance, management, marketing, accounting, decision sciences, business economics, so on and so forth. Okay? So I think this is actually pretty important because it is not really surprising for us to see that if you want to build a successful career in business or in other areas, you cannot actually do it without an extensive knowledge in different disciplines in different areas. And this is the reason why we stress on the integrated nature of our IBBA program, right? So of course, I mean, one thing that students may wonder when it comes to the so-called IBBA program is that, well, Will this program be a very general, very genetic one? So that, okay, it seems that I know some finance, I know some entrepreneurship, I know some management, but I have no specific strength. Okay, is it the question that you have in mind? Partly so, right? Partly. So this is the reason why, I mean, every student in the IBBA program will be able to pick what we call a concentration area, the term is here concentration area. So what does it mean by concentration area? This is actually related to the design of the program. So uh, as I've mentioned, 
In nature, the IB Bay program is, of course, an integrated one, a comprehensive one. But we also offer an opportunity for students to take a deep dive on a particular area. So that's what I say, it's just easy for you to imagine this. So uh, right now you're interested in a business program, but you have no clear idea about which specific area to build your career. All right, so I'm kind of interested in finance. I'm kind of uh, interested in economics. I'm kind of interested in HR, human resources management. So which one to pick? The IBBA program offers you this kind of quote unquote flexibility, right? So students admitted to this IBBA program will spend the first two years, around two years, studying the university core courses as well as foundation courses in all business area. And then after that, you will be asked to pick one area to take a deep dive. You find out, for example, after your first year, you find out that economics is actually something of interest of you. This is your cup of tea. So then what can you do? You can actually take the more advanced level in your third year and your fourth year, and then you do a concentration, in other words, in business economics. Okay, so this is the general design of the program. Isn't it a nice one? Let me see whether someone say no, all right? All right. Of course, I mean, this is the idea, right? And uh, some students will be, well, I mean, forgive me for using this word, some students could be quite greedy. Economics is nice, but at the same time, I love management as well. Is it possible for me to do two concentration areas? The answer is yes. Okay. This is actually related to the second point I want to mention when it comes to the IBBA program, the flexibility that we are offering. Yeah. The flexibility. So every student, as you can see here, in the IBBA program will have the chance to take at most two concentration areas. So if you're interested in business economics and you think that, well, I am a genius in finance as well, go for it. Okay. So by the time that you graduate, that's what I say, you will graduate from the integrated BBA program with two concentration areas, economics, business economics, and finance, all right? So in some sense, that's what I say, in some sense, you will be able to tailor-made the curriculum within the IBBA framework, within the IBBA curriculum, you will be able to tailor-made your, uh, tailor your own experience according to your needs, according to what you love, all right? So uh, you may wonder, of course, I mean, what kind of concentration areas that we are currently offering? There are nine concentration areas, as you can see here. So uh, we have uh, business economics, entrepreneurship, finance, so on and so forth, right? In particular, business analytics is a term that uh, could be kind of new to some of you, okay? Business analytics actually refers to the discipline or the area that we make heavy use of data and mathematical modeling to help us to improve our business decisions. So nowadays we are always talking about things like big data, right? We talk about AI, right? So all these are actually within this area, business analytics, okay? And one more time, one more time, I mean, you can pick actually up to two concentration areas. And what else? When it comes to flexibility, as an IBBA student, we don't, we don't only allow you to take more than one concentration. There are actually a lot of options for you as an IBBA student. So what we put down here are some key decisions that you can make, all right? So you may take minors, for example, yeah. So uh, as you know, I mean, the Chinese University of Hong Kong is the biggest university, all right? It doesn't really mean that, it doesn't really only mean that we have a beautiful campus. It also means that we are a comprehensive university. We have a lot of different faculties, we have a lot of different departments, we have a lot of different programs. And how is it related to you as a potential IBBA student? It means that you can leverage on this strength and take minors, okay? So as an IBBA student, of course, you are supposed to be interested in business, I guess this is, all right? But then some of you may probably still be wondering what it means by psychology. Psychology, look, I mean, this term looks fancy, 
right? And I would like to know more about psychology. Is it possible? The answer is yes. That's why I put it here, okay? So leveraging on the strength of a comprehensive university, a business students will be able to pick different minors, different minors, I mean, in the university. What I put down here, as you can see, uh, some popular choices of our students. I mean, psychology, I talked about this already. Uh, many of you may be interested to start your own business. So entrepreneurship and innovation, at pin minor is a potential choice for you. Um, social welfare is a minor program offered by the Department of Social Work. Okay, so uh, languages. Languages is actually one popular option for many of the business students. So uh, when you spend four years here studying your IBBA degree, at the same time, you will be learning like Japanese, Korean, Spanish, French, so on and so forth, all right? As your minor, as your minor, okay? So uh, I actually, a long time ago, come across a question from a student and a student asked, hey, do I have to pay extra for this minor? because I'm taking something more, I mean, out of the business school, right? So am I going to be charged for taking a Japanese course? The answer is no, no. Is this included in your tuition, right? So don't panic about this. You can take minor programs, okay? And um, a lot of different options available, I mean, other than the minor options, okay? We have double degree, okay? Which is a collaboration between uh, the business school and the School of Journalism and Communication. Okay, so for those who are interested in this area, this five-year five -year double degree program is a very nice option for you. Okay, and uh, as a potential IB-based student, you can be admitted to the program first. You take a look at this and you re-examine your preference, your plan, and then you can apply for a double degree program at the end of your first year, all right? So you have time to think about this. You have time to think about this. You don't need, really need to make up your mind right now at this point when you apply through the Jupiter system. No, all right? Um, double major options, okay? So uh, you can see a lot of different options here, okay? So uh, we call it double majors, say IBBA plus professional accountancies. Of course, it's specifically designed for those kind of students who said that I'm interested in business, of course, perhaps in finance, perhaps in business analytics, but at the same time, I want to study some accounting to prepare for my career as well. So this double major program, IBBA plus something else, is a good option, all right? So uh, we have uh, IBBA plus professional accountancies, BBA plus uh, insurance financial and actuarial analysis, that's what we call IFAA, many of you should probably know. Uh, we also have IBBA plus quantitative finance, all three different programs. Of course, I mean, there are some restrictions. For instance, if you are taking finance as your IBBA concentration, you won't be allowed to take, I mean, the finance-related double major. And uh, one double major program that I specifically would like to mention to you is the new uh, arrangement. This is a collaboration between the business school and the School of Engineering. This is the IBBA plus financial technology program. Right, so FinTech is a pretty hot area, right? You probably have heard of it already. We have in Hong Kong, for instance, virtual banks in recent years, okay? So uh, you can imagine, I mean, how popular this IBBA plus FinTech program will be, okay? And at the end, of course, uh, we also have the dual degree program and the transferring options, the two at the bottom as well that I'm going to go through with you right now. The dual degree. The dual degree program is a collaboration between uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong as well as IE University in Spain, right? So um, maybe some of you have heard of it. The IE University or the IE Business School has been very famous in the European area, especially for their program, for their curriculum related to innovation and entrepreneurship. All right, so under this dual degree program, or in short, we call, them, we call it DDP, right? dual degree program, right? Dual degree program. So our students are going to spend two years here in Hong Kong, in our beautiful campus here, and another two years in Spain, okay? 
Um, by the time that you graduate four years from now, by the time that you graduate, you graduate with two degrees. Okay, that's why we call it dual degree. Dual means two, right? So two degree. So one awarded to you from this Chinese University of Hong Kong, of course, another awarded to you from the IE University. Okay, isn't it nice? I mean, you can see, uh, sorry, I almost call you class or student because you know that I'm teaching. So um, you probably can see the strength, you probably can see the strength and the advantages of this particular program, right? So you are going to have two years immersive experience in Spain, in Madrid actually, right? So uh, this is actually going to give you something totally different from an ordinary exchange program, which usually take one semester, okay? So uh, the DDP option uh, is a very, very nice option for uh, an IBB students who are interested in knowing more about the European countries, right? Uh, who are planning to develop a career there, all right? Um, another transferring option available for you is the IBC program, okay, which is uh, a very, very nice, uh, important program. So uh, the International Business and Chinese Enterprise program. So uh, it has a four plus one structure. Okay, what does it mean by four plus one? Four plus one means four years undergraduate plus one year master program. So this is a collaboration between CHK Business School and the University of South Carolina in the U.S. So students in this program are going to spend one year, not one term, not one semester, one year, in the US, in uh, South Carolina. Okay. Uh, you are going to have a cohort experience. And by the time that you graduate, by the time that you graduate, I mean, you have, of course, our undergraduate degree, and you also have an option to further your studies at the University of South Carolina uh, in the Master of International Business. Okay, so again, I mean, you can see that these are the different options, very interesting, very valuable options that we are offering to our IBB student. Again, uh, after you admit it to the IBB program, you have the choice, I mean, to pick any of the options that I've just talked about. So uh, a little bit more about our students. So uh, currently, currently we have uh, more than 1,300 uh, IBBA student. If you look at the whole business school, we have more than 3,000 students, all right? So uh, these students, I mean, this uh, 1,300 students comes from uh, more than 20 different countries and regions. And uh, you may notice, actually, the CHK Business School is the most internationalized faculty in the Chinese year. So uh, that's actually echo back to the first slide that I talk about, being the oldest program. Right. And the largest program. By the way, you probably know that the IBBA program is the one with the largest intake size in the business school, right? You probably know. And uh, if you read the news, uh, you probably will find out that uh, we have, you know, some kind of record high in terms of popularity. So we have the program that received the most uh, Ben A applicants in Jupiter. Right. So uh, what does it mean to you? It means that we are going to have the largest alumni network, all right? So if you look at only the IBBA uh, program, we have more than 9,000 IBBA alumni already. So when it comes to the business school alumni, we have more than 40,000. I always talk to my student and advise them to look for different options available not only the program choices that we have spent so much time on. I always said that your university life is actually something much, much more than what's happening in the classroom. I mean, the classroom part is important, of course. But what is equally important is actually what is taking place out of the classroom, all right? So that is actually what we mean by a program. I mean, a program should not be composed of only the list of courses that students are going to take. That's important, but that is not the only thing. And this is the reason why in CHK Business School, we have been encouraging students to take diverse, very different kind of co-curricular activities. And one important thing is of course this, exchange, okay? So um, we are actually proud uh, 
to tell you that uh, we are actually also the faculty with basically the largest number of exchange students. Right? So uh, as you can see, we have more than 280 exchange programs, exchange partners, and uh, 39 of them are actually business school specific exchange partners. Okay, so by participating in the IBBA program, of course, I mean, you can join all these kind of uh, exchange programs. Another thing that we actually encourage students to do is, of course, to do internship. Internship. This is another number that actually make us proud. Over 90% of our students, before they graduate, they have at least one internship experience. Over 90%. Okay, I always said that, of course, I mean, what matters for our program is the teacher, the courses, the co-curricular activities, the opportunities offered to students. Of course, these are important, but the more important thing is actually our students. How can we have this kind of high number for internship? Of course, I mean, our professors are well connected to the industries, at least both of them, all right? But what matters the most, again, is our students. So the senior students, the graduates, the alumni have been doing very well in different aspects, in different business industries. And that exactly is the reason why the employers are confident in our program. They're confident to offer internship opportunities to our students, okay? So uh, you guys, after you're admitted to the program, are not only a student here, but also our ambassador, okay? So um, one more thing about this internship, I mean, the internship does not only take place in Hong Kong. Of course, most of them are. Uh, some of them are full-time, some of them are part-time. And uh, the more interesting thing is actually that the internship may actually take place out of Hong Kong, as you can see it here in the map. So we have students working in Taiwan, Singapore, China, Vietnam, Japan, UK, and the US, of course. Okay. Um, another thing that we are pretty proud of is that uh, all our graduates, all our graduates will have what we call the global experiential learning experience, all right? So by the time that you graduate, you must have some quote unquote out of home experience. So you will be receiving training before you leave Hong Kong. And then you have a period of out of home experience. Maybe it's this internship, maybe it's this exchange, maybe it's a study tour so on and so forth. And then we have another course that helps you to consolidate your learning experience, okay? So we flat your own experience. And that's actually what we mean by the global experience, uh, global experiential learning. I mean, I'm not sure whether you notice or not. I am here, ta-da. <laughs> so uh, this was the photo taken around three years ago. And uh, at that time, I and another colleague have uh, led a group of uh, 20 something students to Prague in Czech, in Central, European, uh, Central Europe, in Central Europe. And we spent around two weeks there visiting different firms, interacting with the locals and visiting different universities there. Okay, pretty amazing experience. And this is the photo that I can show you. There are some other photos that I cannot show you. <laughs> All right. Um, so finally, just want to let you know a little bit more about the career prospect of our students. Um, the good news is that, I mean, uh, job hunting is never a big problem for our students, okay? We are actually pretty happy that uh, it's actually quite easy. I mean, even though we have COVID in the past two or three years, I mean, our, our graduates are actually doing quite well in terms of job hunting. So uh, as you can see here in the pie chart, I mean, around one third our of our students will be working in the banking or finance industry. Uh, 15, around 15% 15 in the marketing and sales and around another 15% in administration or management. So that's what I say if you roughly, I mean, look at these big, three big areas, I mean, that it accounts for around 80% of our students, okay? So hopefully, hopefully um, in the past 20 something minutes, I have given you an overview about uh, what the IBBA program is. Okay, so you know about the program structure, the design of the program, what kind of potential options that you have, and very importantly, what is going on out of the classroom. And hopefully, hopefully, I mean, uh, you will be, you know, 
able to make a good choice for yourself. I'm, I mean, when I say that, I, just, I don't actually mean that, okay, come, come and join us now, okay? So it will be nice, of course, I mean, if you're interested in joining the IBBA program, this is very nice, okay? But at the same time, I mean, I always said that uh, the information section here, for instance, is an event that gives you more information and you can only make a good decision or at least a better decision with more information. So maybe, I mean, after listening to what I have shared with you, you find out that, hmm, sorry, this is not something that I'm looking for. Perfectly fine. And I, I, and I congratulate you. And the reason is, I mean, you won't pick a wrong program. That is something that we don't really want to see. Okay, so think about what you want to do. Think about what you want to experience in the coming four years in university and check, I mean, whether IDBA program is your cup of tea. All right, so that concludes our first part. I mean, no hands, okay? No, okay, because we are going to proceed to the second round. Thank you, Dr. Ku, for your sharing on the IBBA program. I'm sure that we all now have a better idea on what it is and the very much favorable prospect of it. By the way, I'm Jeff. I'm a sophomore from IBBA. And I'm Nalini. I'm also a sophomore from IBBA. Welcome to CHK Info Day 2022. Moving on to the second part. Today, we are honored to have alumni as our guests. These are IBBA alumni. First, we have Mr. Ross Hui. He's the VP and Head of Compensation and Benefits. <laughs> Asia Pacific Moody's Corporation. Then we have Ms. Noelle Orr. She's the Sourcing Manager, Group Sourcing AIA Company Limited. <laughs> and lastly, we have Ms. Maggie Chu, Account Manager, Large Customer Sales, Google. Finally, I'd like to invite Dr. Ku again as a moderator in this session. Please proceed to the stage. Thank you. Sorry for that. I missed all my iPad. <laughs> all right. Um, again, thank you, uh, Noel, Maggie, and Ross for joining us today. Okay. Um, what about we start by, say, going around the table so that you can you know, introduce yourself a little bit more to our audience? Uh, how about we start with Ross? Sure. Um, it's good to see all of you guys here. Uh, we are getting a little bit fatter about the Zoom and remote stuff, and <laughs> good to see you guys in person. Um, hi there, this is Ross. Um, I graduated in CHK Business School IBBA program uh, in 2003, decades ago. Um, I hate to disclose that, actually. <laughs> um, and also, I finished another program with CHK Business School again uh, in 2012, again, decades ago, <laughs> in postgraduate diploma in accounting. Uh, which uh, I currently working in Moody's, serving as their head of compensation benefits. Um, um, it's part of the HR. Uh, maybe compensation benefits is new to some of you guys. It's part of the HR uh, functions. Um, right now, um, I'm also serving as a part-time lecturer in Hanson University as well. That would be something I would like to talk about a little later about that opportunity. But I would like to pass to Noel to introduce herself. Sure, thanks, Ross. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Noel. Um, I'm actually uh, a CUHK graduate from the IBBA program, of course. And guess what? I get graduated in the same year as Ross. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I involved in the procurement field uh, after I graduate and in various industries, for example, like uh, retail, hospitality, and also insurance. And actually, I uh, work in all areas of the supply chain, from product sourcing to uh, product development, and from project management to governance, and also from logistics to supply management. And uh, apart from being an uh, alumnus of the IBBA program, I'm also a current student of the CHK Business School. And uh, actually, this is my second year of the MBA study. And uh, I'm actually very happy to take a break from the class and to be here with you all today. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Maggie. Uh, so I'm also a graduate from the Ivy Bay program. So back then, I took the concentration in marketing and also management of international business. So currently, I'm now working in Google, and I am the account manager of the large customer sales team. So basically, I look after different clients across industry, like fashion and beauty, uh, and also food and beverages. So back then in university, I think I'm a really active person in which I really enjoy uh, studying, of course. <laughs> and also playing. So I, I actually joined a lot of different uh, societies. You know, I was in the music society, and then I was also the organizing committee for a lot of OCAMs, for the faculty OCAMs, and also for the college OCAMs. Uh, so I really had a really great time uh, in CUHK back then. So yeah, I was gonna share a little bit more stories later on. I'll pass back to Fred. Thank you, Maggie. All right, so uh, even though we have only limited time, but you guys know that I have prepared a couple questions for you. Okay, some more challenging, some less. All right, so uh, how about we start with the, the least challenging one. So uh, why did you pick uh, business, right? Back then, I mean, when you were picking university, you know, choosing what kind of path that you want to have, and uh, so why business and why specifically, of course, CUHK? So, Ross? Um, I think, um, first of all, um, why business? I think definitely is out of my interest. I think, um, or, or I make it that way. Um, I really do not have um, a very strong desire to be say, I would like to be a lawyer, I would like to be a doctor or whatever. But business definitely seems a very makes sense choice in Hong Kong, right? Uh, because it's a business world, commercial world. Um, and also why CHK, I mean, definitely is because of the, uh, this way it's talking about that case ago, I've declared that, uh, but I still think that the quality remains valid, which is about the atmosphere and the bonding. Uh, definitely for for business school, you may know that from uh, from Fred, that it is a most long-lasting business school, very strong alumni network, and also the branding of CHK Business School definitely can facilitate quite a lot for my career as well. Uh, I think that will be another, uh, and in terms of the atmosphere and people, you can definitely tell that the atmosphere used to be, the environment is still very decent, very nice, very nice people. Um, so um, that would be my reason. <laughs> Choosing uh, CHK Business School back to 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ross. And I guess we do still have this kind of atmosphere and culture here in Chinese University. All right. Yes, well. I agree. <laughs> so um, actually, I have a deep interest in business because of my father. And he has a big influence on me. Uh, by saying that, I do not mean that he asked me to study business. Actually, he's a businessman who runs his own company. And uh, he's very smart and very presentable and very confident. And you know, that's just uh, put a seat into me you know, for the business school. And why CUHK Business School? I agree with Ross. Uh, actually, CUHK Business School is a very popular choice back then. You know, when I- uh, Still you know, today. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it has a very long history, and uh, you know it is very reputable. And uh, actually, the IBBA program offers a very comprehensive uh, curriculum, uh, you know, for for me back then to develop, uh, you know, very skill in the business area. And it is a very very popular choice, uh, you know, I know now, and actually back then, you know, many of my classmates, uh, which wants to study business, actually also chose CUHK. And uh, just uh, talk a little bit about the CUHK, why CUHK, right? So uh, I love the CUHK campus, so it's so beautiful. And uh, especially in this type of weather, and you can see the clear blue sky and such a big campus, the mountains and the sea, and it offers a very good environment to study. and you know, to enjoy your four years of university life. Thank you, Noel. Very true. Cool. Okay, so I will start with saying why I want to get into CUHK. Um, so obviously, first of all, so pretty. <laughs> so when I'm looking at the picture, I'm like, I'm getting in here. Um, so I think the second thing that I really like about CU is the college system. I think this is very special. Like, not a lot of uh, university actually has that. Especially when I was small, I have that, you know, like the, the fantasy of, you know, Harry Potter and then how you get into <laughs> Gryffindor, Slytherin, you know. 
Um, and then we, I actually have that feeling. And then in different college, you have different culture, and you can do whatever you want. Um, you can be the organizing committee of different activities. So it's really very fun, uh, and I really love CUHK. And the reason why I pick business school, um, I think back then when I actually finished DSC, I don't really know what I want to do. Um, back then in DSC, just to share a little bit, I picked really weird subjects. I picked chemistry, uh, economics, and also arts. <laughs> so completely not relevant at all. So you can see like how lost I was back then in the secondary school. Um, and then when I went into CU, I actually joined like a mission talk and all that. And I actually found it quite interesting. Like um, in, in nowadays, you know, uh, people are always talking about business. So I'm really interested to know what business actually is because it's so abstract. And I think it's like a foundation of how the economy actually works. So when I came to CUHK, I remember I was in a talk or something, and I was talking with a help, uh, like a student helper or yeah. And then he actually told me that this IBBA program, and I found it really interesting uh, because it actually has comprehensive scope across like marketing, management, business, um, finance, literally anything. And for a very lost person like me, I found it so interesting because I'm like, oh, I can study everything and then I can just choose it maybe two years later. Like, I don't have to make a choice right now. So that's the major reason why I really want to get into CUHK Business School. A lot of flexibility and very comprehensive. Cool. Uh, I would like to supplement porn. Uh, actually, I was as lost as Maggie uh, about two years ago. But actually, I really like the CHK curriculum, which are uh, already an answer, I mean, uh, back to my time, which is you need not to choose your concentration right now immediately. You have the, you have the, I actually, I have the opportunity to explore different classes, different business fundamentals courses before I choose my favorite choice. Uh, which is HR, which is a weird choice, uh, to be very honest. Um, but anyway, uh, that already, I think, mean, unlike other universities, I think mean, that uh, allow you some time to explore something, um, to make sure what exactly your interest is, and allow you with some more flexibility to choose your career path. Thank you, Ross. Um, I try not to do some kind of direct comparison between different universities, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, but still, I mean, there's one thing that I really want to stress on. I mean, apart from the, say, two concentration areas, I mean, that you can pick, I mean, another very important thing about this uh, concentration is that there is no intake quota for each of the concentration. So that's what I say, I mean, this kind of things will not happen to you. It will not happen to you. So suppose you are interested in finance, and uh, for some reason, I mean, by the time that you choose concentration, I mean, finance turns out to be a very popular choice, and you have to compete with your peers so that you can get into that program. If you're unfortunate, unfortunate enough, all right, so you will be forced to study some other concentration areas that you are not interested in. This will not happen in CHK Business School. This will not happen in the IBBA program. And there is a reason behind this, of course. I mean, once you're admitted to the IBBA program, we think that we, you are qualified and you should be able to give in the choice of the concentration that you love the most. Two, actually, <laughs> two concentration areas, if you would like to, okay, that you love the most. And this is actually pretty important, I would say. All right. So uh, what about we go to the next question, right? So how did the CHK business education help you develop your career? or say going one step further to enrich your life. I mean, this is actually, of course, I mean, the question that I would like our alumni to share some good thing, right, about, about the program. But it may not be always the case, I mean, Ross. <laughs> uh, the answer is positive, no worry. Uh, that would be my part-time lecturing uh, opportunity I mentioned earlier. Actually, it was referred by my ex-professor when I studied in Studio HK Business School. Uh, because she, she moved to another role in Hansen University and she knows that I'm pretty experienced in a particular area. She looked for me to take on the opportunity. You can see the bonding right there um, uh, in CHK, not only within the students, not even the alumni, but also with the professors. It used to be very strong. Um, then definitely can bring you values for your career. 
Of course, when it comes to job hunting, when you look for different jobs, look for different careers, definitely the branding may help. The CHK alumni, I have to say that, they used to be very kind to or other alumni as well. It would come from the same university as that. So I think definitely, um, it's still, still something hard to say uh, what exactly how to quantify the, the benefits, but definitely you will feel the benefits yourself. And also as well as that, just like the part-time lecturing opportunity is even referred by my teachers. I mean, that's a very typical example to see how strong the bonding, how will you be beneficial with the network of the alumni and the teachers in the business school. Thank you, Ross. I mean, the bonding among the peers, the bonding with the teachers. I guess, I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at, if you look at, um, you know, the uh, relationship between teachers and students in the CHK business school, I mean, you can, you can feel that they are actually closely related, they're closely connected. And also, I mean, one thing that Ross has mentioned is a alumni network, right? I mean, I talked about this already as well, right? Noel. Um, for me, the comprehensive curriculum really helped me a lot in my career. So uh, I work in the procurement field, right? So there are lots of things related to operations management, you may imagine. However, they are also linkage to other subjects as well. Like, for example, when we do the product development, then, you know, we need to do some marketing because we need to understand the brand, how to bring out the brand, right? And then for the other area, uh, finance. So when we evaluate a supplier, we also need to evaluate the financial strength of that particular supplier as well. So I feel that the IBBA program can weave all these subjects together and give me a very good foundation of how I progress my career. And uh, even though I'm in the procurement field, I uh, advance fairly quickly, you know, from the product executive to a senior to a team leader, because I've been given this uh, solid knowledge so that I, I feel that uh, among I, my peers, actually, I can, uh, you know, uh, step uh, be one step forward of them yeah, to understand the business better. So uh, that really helped me a lot. And the other is uh, other thing is, um, Maggie mentioned about the old camps, right? So that really uh, was was very fun. And I, I encourage, encourage you all to join, <laughs> you know, in the university ori orientation camps. And I supported the organization of the old camp. And, uh, you know, that we need to plan out, you know, how to move the group of people from one location to another one in CUHK campus. So imagine that. So we need to work out all the timetable, et cetera. And then uh, when we think about the souvenirs, so we think about the practicality. So uh, one key takeaway from this experience is that, um, you know, for business, it is for real. So it is not something just a theory. And uh, for everything, you need to experience it, you know, try to make it practical. Then you need to action, right? So in my product development, when I find some product uh, issue or maybe some shelving problem, no, I just get to the store and see what the pr problem is. And I think uh, this mentality is very important in, the, you know, solving practical problems in the business. Thank you. Cool. Um, so I think um, how business school actually helped me for my job right now, I think two areas. Like one is really the program design, and the second thing is on the connection. So I would just talk about the first point uh, on the program design. So I think a lot of you may think, okay, business is all about earning money, right? It's so abstract. Like, I don't think I can really learn a theory or something like that, but it's not the case. So I think the best thing about uh, when I was studying in business, I actually took marketing as one of my concentrations. And I always thought marketing is about promotions, like setting a booth and all that, but it's actually totally not that thing. Um, so I remember back then there was a time when I studied a course, I forgot the name, but then uh, the professor actually invited a CEO uh, of a company and it's actually a startup. And then uh, I remember it was selling perfume. Yeah, and, and then the program was um, designed to like invite different you know, uh, business uh, people to come and share the challenges with you. So back then I remember that CEO actually came and said, uh, she just started her business and then she don't know how to promote her brand. So she actually shared um, a very clear like brand brief uh, all these information with us. So what we have to do is that within a few weeks time, we actually have to interview people uh, online, offline, qualitative analysis, uh, quantitative analysis, and also do a lot of research. And then at the end, we will come out to do a presentation to shape like what is the business plan? Um, how do we do the promotion? What are some of the insights? Um, and how are we going to 
action on those insights and come up with maybe uh, some of the promotion activities. So I think this is really helpful for me uh, because right now I'm in a sales team. Um, so it's actually really similar because I also look after different clients that I said. And usually what I do is that they came to me with a brief. They say, okay, I actually uh, losing a certain amount of business uh, dollars, you know, and then we want to boost it up maybe 2x e-com revenue in the next few quarters. What should I do? I have this budget and you have to plan it for me. So this is exactly the same as what I actually experienced back then. And it's very helpful as I know, okay, what are the next steps that I'm going to do? I'm going to interview someone else. I'm going to research uh, who I should reach out to. So I think this is really helpful for me. So it's not just about studying theory, but you actually can put it into practice in your class. Um, so that's the first point. And I think the second point on the connection is really, really important. Um, so how I actually got into Google, I actually got um, um, referred by one of my schoolmates back then, uh, also in CU Business School. Uh, so he is one year elder than me, and he got into Google one year earlier than me. So back then I was like looking for jobs, and then um, he actually came to me and said, oh, are you interested in Google? And I was like, uh, I don't think I can get in. <laughs> you know. And, and um, if it's not him, I don't really know that Google has opening, and I'm not going to be in here. So I think the connection is really helpful for me. Um, so yeah, as, as Noelle just said, just enjoy your time here. Remember to go to orientation camps, join a lot of societies, just meet at as many people as possible because the connection is very valuable. Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. It's amazing. I mean, uh, students, I mean, what you can see here is that uh, we always work with industry partners, I mean, trying to enrich our curriculum and also provide extra opportunities, I mean, for our students. I mean, I, th I think this is actually, I mean, what Maggie has mentioned is pretty important. I mean, uh, we do not only teach theories and the ability to apply the theory to different situations is actually very, very important. All right. So uh, because of the time constraint, may I invite you guys, I mean, to give, say, one quick advice, I mean, to our prospective students, the most important thing that they should pay attention to or whatsoever. Maybe? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think just one sentence. Go with the flow. Just don't, um, don't feel stressed. I know it's really stressful when you just get in here. You don't know how your future is going to be. To be honest, back then, I don't know what I was doing. I was like, okay, business, I got in here. And, oh, and then and I was in Google. So, you know, sometimes you don't know how your path is going to be. Just enjoy your time in university. It's really true. I really want to go back to university because it was the happiest time in my entire life. I literally just play, play, play all the time. Of course, studying is important, but <laughs> play is also a very important part um, in school to like meet people and like acquire skills, not just in the classroom, but like how you socialize with people. Um, a lot of these kind of skills is very important when you come up to work as well. So um, just go with the flow, no stress, and just have fun and, and uni. Thank you. Um, I would not say advice, but I uh, just want to share with you a tip. Um, be a very, uh, you, you, you need to develop your problem solving skills and hone it through your curiosity. So uh, why I say that is because the business world is changing very quickly. So you cannot imagine what problems you'll be facing in the business or in your life. So the this skills is very important. And the focus is actually not providing solution, but actually in asking the right questions to yourself. So Albert, uh, Albert Einstein once said that, so if he had one hour to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and then five minutes for the solution. So uh, nurture your inquisitive mind and, you know, just ask why, why not, what, what if, you know, ask the, uh, all the questions and uh, leverage your, your time and your connection in the university or in your life, yeah, to develop the skills. Thank you, Noel. Um, I would like to say just leverage the, all of the you know, opportunities to broaden your horizons, no matter internship, no matter exchange program, no matter overseas experience program. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I think mean, definitely that would be something very useful for your career and make yourself be more competitive. We are talking about global economy right now. Definitely, those experience can definitely add values and have you have something in real practice other than theories uh, to make your make yourself a better one um, in the coming future. Thank you, Ross. So, uh, students, I mean, I hope you can get some key insights, very important lessons, I mean, from the sharing of our alumni. All right, so let's give them a big hand.
Thank you again, Ross, Noel, and Maggie. Allow us to express our greatest gratitude to Dr. Ku and our honorable guest speakers, Ross, Noel, and Maggie, for taking time out of their busy schedule and attending this alumni sharing session. May we now invite Dr. Ku for, to share about the admissions and admissions interviews update to all our guests. Please, Dr. Ku. The good news is that I mean most of the information that I'm going to highlight here are available online. So uh, don't panic if you cannot grasp everything. Uh, the second thing is that I will suggest you to have your camera ready. So I'm going to show you some QR codes. Important information can be found from this QR code. You may take a photo or you can go, I mean, uh, look at the, I mean, use the QR code to look at the page directly, all right? So um, the first thing is that, I mean, everyone knows this already, all right? So this is just a warm up, all okay? right? Um, so there's something called a university minimum requirement for GPS students. So uh, we have a three, three, two, two, three, three. I guess this is pretty obvious. And I uh, just want to remind you that, I mean, for IBBA program, we are using the best five as the selection principle, the best five. And uh, we don't have a specific or different weighting for different subjects. So uh, regardless of what kind of subjects that you are taking, I mean, we treat it as equal. So uh, best five. And uh, if you are taking M1 and M2, I mean, M1 and M2 will be considered as one elective as well, okay? Second theme, there is something called total reference score. Yeah, I mean, Canberra, <laughs> okay. So uh, there's something called total reference score published by uh, the Central University, you know? And from here, you will be able to see uh, the reference scores for different programs, all right? So this is different from the program minimum. This is not the program minimum, but some kind of reference score that you can actually take note to. So for instance, for IBBA, as you can see, the median that we have last year is uh, 23, and the lower quartile is the same number, 23, okay? So uh, take a look at the... Uh, QR code, I mean, the document there, and you will be able to uh, have a better idea. So uh, pay attention to the way that you compute the score. I mean, five double star, for instance, equals to a seven. Five star equals to a six, so on and so forth. Okay? So uh, we have also the admission calculator, admission score calculator that helps you to pick different choices, all right? So you can make good use of this uh, admission score calculator that we provided to you. Enter some expected scores that you have, and the calculator will make some recommendations to you. So what program, which program that you will have a higher chance to be taken, right? Ready? Okay. Interviews. Um, we actually pay a lot of attention to interviews, and the reason is we always think that students are actually more than the grades. Students are students. They are not grades. They are not a, uh, you know, a pile of paper of your achievement or whatsoever. We want to know you. We are not only interested in knowing your academic achievement, your academic performance, okay? And that's why we have interview. So um, the interview will be arranged this year in mid to late June, as you can see it there. The exact date will be announced. So uh, pay attention to this. If you are planning to have some kind of you know, vacation trips or whatsoever, try to avoid this time. Try to avoid this time, okay? So um, actually, almost all, almost all CHK business school students, before they get in, they will be interviewed. Okay, so in other words, in other words, if you do not go through the interview process, it's actually pretty difficult for you to get in. Okay, so please pay attention to this. So how to be invited? I mean, there is a very important thing that you should pay attention to. Because of capacity, we are not able to interview every student. We are not able to do it. So this is our selection principle. If you're interested in our program, if you put our program in band A, then we will, be in, we will be inviting you for an interview, okay? So if you are interested in any of the CHK Business School program, remember to put at least one on band A. 
so that we know that you are really interested in it, and we will invite you for an interview. Okay, and this is very, very important. Okay, so uh, of course, I mean, you may wonder, I mean, what kind of things that we are looking for during the interview? I mean, I should actually put it down here, creativity, social awareness, so do you know what is going on? I mean, outside of the books, okay? So uh, your communication skills, your problem solving skills, as well as your attitude, okay? So uh, of course, I mean, uh, we do not only admit students from the JUPAS, right? So uh, the local non jupas students will also be considered as well. I mean, uh, the, the usual, I mean, qualification that we consider will be, say, GCE A level, international A level, uh, IB, so on and so forth. So on and so forth, actually. Okay. So uh, you can actually look at the university website okay, for competitive admission score for non jupas for non jupas I mean, so other qualifications. And uh, scholarship, that is the final thing that I want to talk about. So uh, the CHK and CHK Business School are offering competitive uh, scholarship for the high flyers, for the high achievers. So, uh, but the, <laughs> so you're not interested in scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, all right. So I just want to show you this because, <laughs> calm down, all right. So one more minute to go. So um, I'm, in particular, showing this piece of information for you because it's actually difficult to find, because this is difficult to find. So uh, if you have, for instance, a five, five, five double star, you will be awarded this much from the university and this much from the business school. So in total, this is your scholarship, 2,500, sorry, 25,000. Okay. So this is a scholarship that you are going to receive. Yeah, I mean, you may take a picture for this. So uh, this is actually quite difficult to see uh, online. <laughs> I mean, when I talk about money, you guys are so excited. <laughs> All right. So uh, we have some reference score for uh, non jupas students as well. But uh, of course, I mean, if you're interested to know more, let us know. All right. So this is a scholarship arrangement as well. So uh, do find us. Of course, I mean, this uh, one hour event is not able to tell you everything. So look at our website. And more importantly, let's get connected. So this is our social media. Take a photo, like our page, and get the most updated information. Because you guys are leaving, so let me say goodbye. Thank you very much. <laughs>